In this video, I'll be helping you with the Alex problem type called completing Gauss-Jordan elimination with a two by two matrix. We are given this system of equations to solve, and we have the structure here for how to solve it using matrices and elimination. You can see that the coefficients in front of the X have been moved into the first column. The coefficients in front of Y are in the second column, and the constants on the right hand side are in this third column and our process for this elimination is going to be to turn this matrix into the identity matrix where we have these ones on the diagonal. So in step one here we would like for this element in the upper left hand corner here to be one. So in our first step we would like for this element to be one as in the identity matrix. And since our only tool at this point is multiplication, I can multiply everything in this first row. Remember, this is the operation for row one. I can multiply everything in there by one half. So this would give me one half of two, which is one, one half of 12, which is six, and one half of four, which is two. So first step, multiply everything in row one by one half, and that now gives me the one that I wanted in that upper left-hand corner. From here for step two, now that we have that one in the upper left-hand corner, we're gonna use row multiplication and addition to eliminate the first element in the second row, which we want to be zero. And to do so, we're going to multiply row one, this top row, by some coefficient, and then add it to the second row. And so here, I'll need to multiply row one by negative two. That would give me a negative two times one is negative two, negative two times six, a negative 12, and negative two times two, a negative four. And then we're adding that to the second row. So we're adding negative two and two to get zero. Again, that was my goal for this operation all along. And in doing so, I will also add negative 12 and 16 to get four. Negative four and four are added to be zero. So two steps in here, and we now have that first one that we wanted and the zero. So, so far, so good. Next we want this second element in that second row to be a one as well. Remember, we're trying to get back to this identity matrix. So to make that four a one, what would I need to multiply by? I would multiply by one fourth. Across the entire row, one fourth times zero is still zero. One fourth times four is one. And one fourth times zero is zero. Just doing this sort of scalar multiplication, we now have the one in the upper left-hand corner, the one in the lower right-hand corner, and the zero. Our last step here is going to be to turn this six into a zero. And I can do that by first doing row multiplication on the bottom row and then adding it to the top. So I would need to multiply that bottom row by negative six in order to add it to the top row and cancel that six. So multiplying the bottom row by negative six, zero times negative six is zero. Negative six times one is negative six. Negative six times zero is again zero. Adding this row to the top gives me a zero plus one is one. Negative six plus six is zero and zero plus two is two. And for that bottom row, we still have the same zero in that last spot. From here, now that we have the identity matrix on the left-hand side, the first column represented X. And so one X equals two, X is two. The second column was Y and one Y equals zero. So Y equals zero we've solved the system of equations.